Hi guys, it's Shelly here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. So today I thought I'd come on here and share with you all the pages I've completed in 2022. So basically a wrap up of 2022. I did put a poll up on the community tab to ask you guys whether you guys would like to see this video um, and see all the pages I've completed in 2022 because I know I share my end of month pages um, every month, so the completed pages for every month and I have obviously because it's um, my channel basically was started in 2022 I was sort of sharing all my work that I've ever done like even before the channel in each of my books and so I wasn't sure whether you guys would be interested in seeing my 2022 wrap up but um, I think the popular answer was a yes um, so yeah I thought I'd come on here and just quickly share it with you I'll try and not um, talk too much in detail about the pages and it's not going to be in order um, so I've just sort of gathered the books and um, every now and then I'll probably just stop and restart the video so I can go and put the books away into my bookshelf um, as we're going along um, otherwise uh, yeah I won't be so happy after I've recorded this video I'll be like I'll see the heap of books and I'll uh, be a bit sad <laughs> that I'm having to put all those books away. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd just come on here and quickly share with you my wrap up for 2022. Now, some of these pages you may have seen quite recently, so I apologize for that. But like I said, I won't spend too much time on each page. And uh, with regards to mediums, as you guys know now, I um. Which book should I start with? That one. Um, I use basically for pencils my Albert Durer pencils, Faber Castell Albert Durer pencils, and I use them dry and wet um, as a combination. Certain pages I use them just dry, such so certain pages I'll use them as a combination. Um, and then my additional mediums that I tend to use are distressings, Tombow Jewel brush pens, soft pastels and Neo Color 2s, and that's pretty much it. And then for embellishments, I tend to use um, paint pens, more recently the Thule Art, but generally paint pens, um, glitter gel pens, metallic gel pens, and anything else? I use Winsor & Newton white ink for the sprinkling effects you'll see on some of the pictures. And if you see any metallic sprinkling effects, I use the Art, Teaser, I always forget the Arteza metallic watercolor paints. So basically, those are all the supplies I've used in 2022 um, and nothing else. So, uh, but if you have any questions about any specific pages, just you know, give me a shout and I will definitely um, give you more detail if you want. So, sorry, this is Rita Berman's um, spring book. And I've done this page. I, like I said, I won't give too much detail about the pages, but I will, if there is anything interesting, I'll mention it. Um, I did enjoy colouring this page and I used soft pastels in this case, actually, to do basing off the hills and then went over with my pencils. And I remember trying to do sort of add in like a blurry effect of flowers um, and extra leaves in the background. I really like how the waterfall turned out in this page. But yeah, I enjoyed colouring this page. Then I also did, I remember colouring quite a lot in this book actually in spring this year. Like one thing I noticed when I was going through all my pages for 2022 is, yeah, maybe I, I have done quite a few pages. I think that I started working in July of 2022. So, so for the first six, seven months, um, I think I did quite a bit of colouring. And then once work started, that slowed down quite a bit. Um, but I think more than the number of pages I've done in total, what I was really happy about when I was pulling all these books out was I coloured in a lot of different books. And it just made me feel good that I showed love to a lot of variety of books. So, yeah. Um, so it's nice actually going through all these pages and seeing that I've actually touched so many different books rather than just sticking to certain uh, books. So this was another page I did. I really enjoyed this one. Again, I was trying to, I did a, an all pencil dry background for this one and I tried to add some um, so idea of having leaves. I really enjoyed doing that. Um, yeah. And then this page, this page I used the distressings for the background and I did use 
uh, drawing gum to sort of uh, block out any areas I didn't want the distressing to go on and it worked really well um, for this particular page. Simple page but I really enjoyed colouring it and I tried to do some shadow effects underneath all these leaves to make them look a bit 3D like they're poking out rather than just flat on the on the ground. So really enjoyed doing that page. And the last page or double page spread I did. So I did two double page spread, spreads in this book this month, uh, this year, um, was this one. Yeah, really enjoyed that. I think there's a, there's a full colour along on, on the channel for this page. And then this page, I think I did off, off camera in my own time, but I used exactly the same colour palette. But yeah, I definitely used, uh, I, I definitely recorded this video and I used basically soft pastels and for the background and tried to do erasing um, my eraser. I used my eraser to erase out the clouds to give that sort of effect. Really enjoyed this page. And that's it. Really happy with how the pages in this particular book turned out. So that was Rita Berman's Spring Book. And then another Rita Berman, uh, the summer book, and I think I only did one page in this. Let's ignore that one. <laughs> that was done in June 2020, so just literally a month after I started colouring. Um, but this is the page you can concentrate on. That's the one I did this year. Um, and I have a full colour along video for this, video, uh, for this uh, particular page as well on the channel. Really had fun doing this page. I love the colours that I chose and how it turned out. Again, I used soft pastels for the background and I used an eraser and a sten circle stencil just to colour out, um, erase out those circles just to give a little bit extra for the background. Um, used a lot of uh, gold glitter gel pen and yeah, liked that page and that was it in that book. So that's Rita Berman's summer book. Then again, so like I said, these are not in order, but at the moment I'm starting off with all my smaller books and so they all turn out to be my Rita Berman's, a lot of them, and I coloured in all of her books actually, all the books I own um, this year, uh, 2022, and then I'll go through some of the big books and I'll put those away, then I'll bring back some more books. Okay, um, so the page I coloured here I only did one but it was a double page spread and that was this page here I remember it taking me a while but I did enjoy doing it and yeah same mediums basically I used my Albert Dura pencils I think uh activated with water for the sky and then I went over with the pencils um dry to make the sky a bit bolder and I did activate the water as well but I didn't go over with the pencils in that case um yeah, really enjoyed this. I wasn't so sure about my colour for the, is that a giant squid? Um, I, I wasn't so sure about the colour I chose for that, but it's okay. I enjoyed the page. So that was a double page spread in Rita Berman's Under the Water book. Uh, yeah. All right. And then we have Rita Berman's Zooland book. Now, this is the one of the very first books, along with the summer book that I, I got at the start of my colouring journey um, and I've done quite a few pages in this book so I'm, I'm really enjoying that I'm getting lots of pages done in my um, first books basically. Um, so yeah I did this page quite early on in the year before, before I started the channel distressing for the background. Um, really enjoyed that and then I Oh yeah, little. Uh, there's a little video on our, on my channel about how to, if you can't draw freehand like myself, how to use a tracing method to um, draw in or add in elements to a page if you wanted to. That's up on the channel. This page I did. I did this one as a color, uh, a buddy color with coloring kit. This one here. That one's early, an early page, but this one I did with the. Um, Imogen from Colouring Kid. Really enjoyed doing that page. Again, soft pastels for the background. I did soft pastels for the um, sort of for the table or the surface and then I used pencils to darken up the shadows to create shadows. Um, really enjoyed this page. Oh, and I used yeah, I used Black Widow pencils for certain elements, like that blue. That's not from 
Faber-Castell. So in this case, I did use a bit of, um, I think, the Black Widow pencils for the blue. And maybe for that? I'm not so sure. But definitely the blue is not Faber-Castell. Yeah. And then the last one was a double page spread. And this one, I have a how I colour video on, on leaves for my autumn how I colour autumn series um, so doing autumn leaves so I have got that up on the channel but the rest of the page I sort of just did in my own time and I took my sweet sweet time with this one it took me a while I used Neo Colour 2 for the background I want to say I think but yeah really enjoyed this page alright and that was from Rita Berman's land book then another Rita Berman is her Europa book. Oh yes, this one is definitely a colour along on the channel. It did take me a while to record it. Um, but yeah, the full colour along. Or is it for... Yeah, no, I have uh, videos for the full colour along. I think I did one part, if I'm not mistaken. And then um, I think you guys requested the second part. So I, some of you did. So I, I put up... Um, a video for the second part as well if I'm not mistaken that's what I think um new color twos for the background in this case yeah really enjoyed that I liked how that turned out actually because I I find a lot of people enjoy these little illustrations and they find it easy for me I find it a challenge um I know it's nice that you have a little illustration to come in and it doesn't seem so overwhelming that you just you can do one little illustration and go away and come back to the page later but for me trying to make it all cohesive is quite challenging um I don't know why but I always find pages like this quite challenging but I've really enjoyed doing this and then I have this page this page I think I just did in my own time um Albert Durer for the background activated normal mediums really same materials as I mentioned at the beginning of the video I liked how that turned out I wasn't so sure what to do with those circles so I think if I'm not mistaken I got a little bit of inspiration from Karen from Zucchini Kitty for that and then I did this and this one this one I did I feel like I did that. No, maybe I did them both off camera. Yeah, I'm not so sure now. I don't think I have a video for these. But um, I used soft pastels again for the background and just did the stencil erasing. Really enjoyed this. I did this one first and then I used the same color palette a month later to just do this. I don't do that very often because... I find it if I keep the same color palette throughout a book, I, I I get quite bored. Like it would be really relaxing in that you'd never have to think about what colors you're going to choose for a page because you'd have a set out color palette. But I feel for my personality, I'd get quite bored. I like the challenge of looking for new colors and trying to come up with color combinations. So um, very occasionally I'll do this because maybe I want some easy coloring and I want some mindless coloring and then I just use a palette I've just used or a palette I like and use it either this on an adjacent page or on a different page just to give me a little bit of mindless coloring if I just wanted to get started on a project rather than um, do it all the time but I like how it looks in this case and then this page this one is a full color along on the channel all my videos are um i have ocd about organization so i do have um any color alongs i have on specific pages i do have playlists for that book so it will be each specific book so for example for this book i will have a playlist so the europa book um will have its own playlist um so any of the color alongs i mention you can just go and check the playlists out and you'll find the books listed in um where the color alongs are and then for any um how i color videos i have a separate playlist for how i color um and then i'll have certain elements of how i color certain things or how i do backgrounds things like that so i have a playlist for that as well and then i have separate playlists for completed pages so yeah if i do mention that i have a video in a particular sort of 
um, category, you can go and check it out if you want it. So it should be easy to find on the channel if you were interested. But yeah, I, I remember really enjoying this page. The only thing when I started this page that I knew was I wanted my trees to be pink, uh, like cherry blossom trees. Um, so yeah, that's what I had in mind. And then I just worked with that for the rest of the page. Really enjoyed this. And then I remember using lots of uh, Posca to try and do dotted effects to give more of an effect of flowers all over the grass. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. And then I've done this one. I think this was for, I won't remember all the hashtags I've done, especially um, I used to, before I started working, before I started the YouTube channel, I used to manage to do a lot of hashtags on Instagram uh, for each month. Pretty much all the hashtags that were out there, I would try and take part in and support those people who were carrying out those hashtags. And I really enjoyed doing that, um, supporting those hashtags. But nowadays, I do not get it enough time to do all the hashtags i barely get enough pages done but yeah i do remember that this page i chose because it was a hashtag there was a hashtag i think for this specific page maybe yeah i think it might have been for this specific page um and so yeah that's why i'd chosen this but yeah i enjoyed coloring this page nice and simple soft pastels a lot of the background is just soft pastels and then the pencil work and that's it. And that was from Rita Berman's Europa book. And then I have Rita Berman's Asia book. That's the last Rita Berman book I have. Okay, guys. Um, oh, yeah. I did this page as a buddy color with Amanda from Amanda Colors on YouTube and on Instagram. So that was really fun. Really enjoyed doing that. As usual, I'll try and experiment with my skies. Um, really like how this one turned out, the colors. Because I knew the rest of the page was going to be so green. Um, so yeah, I wanted my sky to stand out a bit. I liked doing all these dots again for the flowers to give it, to break up the green basically and give it the look of flowers dotted around everywhere. Yeah, enjoyed that. And then this was the first page I did in this book. I've only done two pages in this book. Really bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am going to need to try and do more soon but this one I've done as a colour along on the channel so it will be in the playlist for Rita Berman's Asia book full colour along really enjoyed that I remember not knowing what to do with the background until the end and then I thought um, it's very rare for me to go for oranges and yellows and that I really thought that worked nicely in the end and yeah that's it for Rita Berman's Asia book well all of Rita Burns books that I own. All right, and then the next small book I have is Kanoko Agusa Symphony of Cute Animals. And I've only done one page in this book, but I do like it. This was for Easter. And uh, this one, I think I've just done a video recently actually for this one. All my completed pages in the uh, Japanese illustrated, Jap Japan illustrated books. Um, so I've talked in a bit more detail for this but I did try to make the eggs look glass like or ceramic like um I enjoyed doing that page yeah and that's it in that book so that was Kanoko Goose's Symphony of Cute Animals and then this one you, you've seen quite recently but I'll show you anyways this is Ursula Schwab's I say Walsh Fluster but I have absolutely no idea how it's actually pronounced um, and I have that page there. I think this must have been, again, a hashtag for on Instagram for maybe Year of the Tiger. Isn't that the one we've just finished now in 2022? What, what's 2020? No, 2022 was Year of the Tiger. 2023, I think, is Year of the Rabbit, is it? Is it Rabbit this year? Um, so, yeah, I did this in February. Really enjoyed doing this page, actually. I bought this book for mindless colouring, but it's turned out that I've actually been enjoying colouring in this book. I do find it a challenge because of quite a bit of the patterny kind of pages, but um, yeah, I've liked the pages I've done in it. And I did this one most recently, and that is the uh, fall win uh, in December, basically. Liked the colour palette a lot, actually. Something different for me, not as bright. 
um again experimenting with the sky i really like how my sky turned out i like that i went for purple trees very random for me um did a bit of the metallic paint so artisa watercolor metallic paints for the i think it was yeah it was for the framework yeah really liked that so that was from ursula schwab's world world fluster all right then to get this book out of the way it's the probably the biggest book i have is wonderful little world volume two by coloria they sent me this book for review there is a review on the channel or a speed coloring and a quick flip of the book on the channel and um i did this page just to show test out how my mediums work and show you guys how the mediums work sorry it's really hard to show this book because it's so large but you guys have seen this recently enjoyed coloring on this paper a lot and I want to try and do another page on this paper and on this paper um just been messing around now mindless coloring um but yeah so that is Coloria's uh, wonderful little world volume two and then we have Makiko Inatome's Wild Mouse Yururi's book this one you've seen again quite recently um, so I'll just go through this quickly. I've done this page here. So for this, as I'd mentioned probably in the last video as well, for each of the uh, title pages for the seasons, I'm quite I'm keeping it quite similar. So is this the next one? No. So for example, I'm going to use soft pastels, the same sort of blue uh, soft pastels. I'm going to do the framework the same. So I've done this page as well and just sprinkling off um, Arteza metallic watercolour paints in gold. Really like it. And what I've noticed is that I'm keep using soft pastels a lot in this book and I like the effect it's giving me. I like the soft effect that it gives my pages. So even in this page that I did, I used soft pastels for the background, the sky and for the grass. And then for the grass, I went over with the pencils um, just to give a bit of shadowing again to make the leaves look like they're 3D rather than just flat. Um, and yeah, just added a little bit of the shadowing underneath some of the elements. Um, but I like the soft um, backgrounds for on in this book. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed coloring this page. I don't, yeah, I think I did this one in my own time if I'm not mistaken. And then I did this one on the channel um i think yeah as a color along so that's available on the channel again soft pastels for the background and for the grass and then just for the grass used a bit of pencil to darken it up um yeah really enjoyed this page loved doing the rain effect with um, the splatters and the drips yeah not I wasn't too happy with the colour I chose for the bug though, but I love my little bird. It looks so fluffy and cute, but I think that's more because of how the illustrator has drawn it than what I've done to it. But yeah, I really liked that. And then this book page I just showed you guys. Um, so that that I have in a video again, um, in the How I Colour, yeah, How I Colour Autumn series, How I Colour Mushrooms just to sort of share a few different color combinations for mushrooms. So yeah, really enjoyed that. And that's it I've done in this book. But yeah, I like the effect of the soft pastels in this book for this uh, particular style of illustration. So I might might keep that a bit consistent. So use, I, I might do different color schemes, yes, but I might use soft pastels quite a lot in this book because I like how those have turned out. And, those are the only pages I've done, so I might try and keep that a bit more consistent on, in this book. All right, so that's Makiko Inotome's Wild Mouse Yururi's Journey Sketch, I think. All right, then these ones, again, you may have seen quite recently. So we have Teresa Goodridge's Village Charm, the first one I'd colored in one of her books and fell in love with her artwork. Um, and I've gone a bit crazy with getting her books now, despite not being able to colour enough pages in them. But this is the um, page I did. Really enjoyed it. Again, I loved doing those dots for the extra flower effects. 
I have a, yeah, I have a, not a color on for the page, but I think I have a how I color clothing or fabric video, something like that, because I remember recording coloring this dress. So that's up on the channel. And that's it actually on this page. And oh yeah, I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed trying to add a little bit of my own touches. So I added like, tried to add an effect of extra flowers and leaves in the background. I, I enjoyed trying to do cloud effects in the sky. So I'm still learning a lot of things, um, despite coloring for what, uh, two and a half years now, but I am still learning. Uh, there's a lot to still sort of figure out really, especially for backgrounds. I still struggle with backgrounds. Oh yeah. And this is where I not only fell in love with um, Teresa Goodridge's artwork, but I fell in love with the Thule Art paint pens as well. I love using them in her book books, but I use them a lot now in all my, my books. But yeah, that's where I fell in love with Thule Art paint pens. So that was Teresa Goodridge's Village Charm. And then I have Teresa Goodridge's Home Sweet Home page. And this one I always giggle at because of how bright my wall turned out to be. Um, yeah, I think I have um, a lot to practice when it comes to interiors. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think I've done that many, so I don't have an idea of how to do background walls and, you know, wallpapers or, yeah, so something to figure out. And maybe this particular book will actually help me do that. So, yeah, I did that page. And that was Home Sweet Home by Teresa Goodridge. And then I have Home Sweet, oh, sorry, Teresa Goodridge's Autumn Charm. Sorry, guys, my phone stopped recording because it ran out of space. Um, I think I was showing this book. It's Teresa Goodridge's Autumn Charm book. And I was showing this particular page here. And um, yeah, I have a full color along of this book, uh, of this page on the channel. And I loved doing this page. I was experimenting quite a bit with it. I loved how my windows turned out. Um, the foggy effect of the windows. I loved adding the extra leaves to make the trees look a little bit more full, even though it's autumn. Um, yeah, and then the best part for me, and I, it's not perfect, but I liked adding all these little circles to sort of give the effect of leaves having fallen on the ground. And that's the one thing I knew when I saw this page, I wanted to try and figure out a way of doing that for this for this page and I'm really happy with how it turned out rather than just having that plain path I really enjoyed trying to do that effect of the fallen down leaves the blurry effect and I, I really like how that turned out um so yeah really enjoyed coloring this page and yes it's a full color along on the channel um so that's Autumn Charm by Teresa Goodridge I don't know how much of that got um cut out I'll probably see when I'm editing <laughs> But then I have Teresa Goodridge's Christmas Charm. This is the last Teresa Goodridge page I'm showing you. And this is the most recent page I've colored of hers. I did this off camera in my own time uh, and really, really enjoyed coloring this page. I loved the color combination I used or came up with for the, the brick wall. I liked the fact that I went for the red for the woodwork. Um, and I added a lot of extra snow with a white paint pen um, to give the um, all the dripping snow effect, the settled snow effect. So that was fun. And again, trying out to re reproduce that sort of foggy effect for the windows. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this page. And I've just realized that all these books have been getting cut out a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, there you go. All right. And that was Christmas Charm by Teresa Goodrich. Then my one and only page that I've still colored um, in Christine Karen's book. I have got one picked out, hopefully for this month. So let's see if I get around to it. I have to be really in the mood to color portrait pages. Although I do love Christine Karen's artwork. Her uh, portrait style is just beautiful. And I really enjoyed coloring this page. So I do enjoy coloring it, but I have to be in the mood to color um, portraits. Um, so yeah, I did this page and I was pleasantly surprised by this Amazon paper. It's the premium one, which is, yeah, it is thin, but it worked well. My, my colors turned out vibrant and 
I did the background with the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils actuated with water and it worked pretty well. So yeah, really enjoyed doing this page. And I definitely got inspiration from her original artwork for the transparent or the translucent clothing. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. And I think the hair, I, I did the hair this colour for At Norma Colourings, uh, one of her hashtags during the year, probably for orange hair. Um, so yeah, her hashtags are really useful in challenging um, me for hair. But yeah, really enjoyed that. So that is Christine Carrot's Fairy and Fantasy. And then I have T Tatiana Bogema's Nice Little Town 6. I have two pages in this book. I have this one here, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. I think I need soft pastels for the background there. And I used a lot of Thule Art paint pens on this page. Again, this is what made me realise once again that I really enjoy using them. I blocked out all the black lines on that building just to make it look a little bit more, more not, not realistic. Um, but yeah, I, I found it just gave that little bit of extra to that by blocking out all those black lines, especially for the building. Really enjoyed doing that. And yeah, then I have this one, which I did early on in the year before I started the YouTube channel. Really enjoyed doing this. I used Distress Ink for the ground here. Sorry. <laughs> um, there we go. Not doing a very good job of recording today. Um, and yeah, used Tombow Jewel brush pens and my pencils. Really like how this page turned out. Someone has requested me, one of uh, my subscribers have requested me to do a page in this book. Um, it, it, I only have two books of Tatiana Bogemas, but this is the book I prefer from the two. So hopefully I can find a page that inspires me and I can try and record that at some point. But yeah, that was Tatiana Bogemas, Nice Little Town 6. And then the only Colouring Heaven book that I coloured this year was uh, Mermaid Special by Anastasia Ellie Calder Riva. I don't have any of her books. Um, again, because of the portrait style and because of the price tag that comes with it. Because I don't gravitate towards portraits that much, it doesn't make sense for me to get any of her books yet until I'm at that stage in my colouring, um, if I ever am, um, to gravitate towards portraits enough to spend on her books. But I like that this um, edition of Colouring Heaven came out, so I bought it um, so I could test out her art style. And I did this page here, the first page in the book, the only one I did, but I think this was for Mermaid. Um, and I think, I don't remember when this edition actually came out, but it took me a long time before I could um, find the courage to colour her work. But I really remember, I remember really enjoying colouring this. Uh, page. I love how my brickwork turned out, um, especially, and maybe the colour of the, I like how the colour of the mermaid's tail turned out too. There we go. So that's my Colouring Heaven uh, Mermaid Special by Anastasia Ellie Calderiva. All right, guys, I'll be back with some more books in just a second. Okay, so I'm back, and I just remembered that I had some PDFs um, that I'd done or some pages I did that were not in books and I thought I'd quickly show those before I carry on with the book. So I do have a Clara Markova postcard. This is one of the postcards that came with uh, free with the her books um, rather than from the postcard set itself. I have got the postcard set itself now um, but this is from one of the freebies and so yeah this is the page I coloured. Um, I liked doing that hair and I think again it must have been a challenge by uh, Norma Colouring on Instagram. So that's um, from Clara Markova's postcards. And then I have Rita Berman's postcards. So this is from the Europa postcard set, which Rita Berman had sent me. This is before I had the YouTube channel. 
um, she contacted me on Instagram and I was so happy because I love colouring her work. Um, so yeah, I found this as a surprise in, in the post. Um, so I did this page. This was a bit of mindless colouring for me. Um, didn't really think, I just decided to go for it. And I did this one, which I really enjoyed. Um, love how that turned out. And now I feel like I wish I did it in the book so I could do the full illustration. Um, but I'll try, I don't know if I made a note of the colours I used. So I don't know if I'll use, may, maybe try and use the same colour palette and do it in the book so I can do the full illustration. I think it's like a double page spread in the book. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed doing that page. And then, this is a very early work of mine, um, uh, well, early in the year work of mine, so January 2022, um, and it was, I'm trying to remember where I got this page from, is it Art Philosophy Co or something, they have some free illustrations for download, I can't remember because I downloaded them so long time ago and I had this um, saved on my computer and I decided to print it out and try it. I just, um, I don't like to print out at the moment because my printer is not the best one. It's an ink printer and so my, because I use watercolour pencils and with distress inks and everything like that, it just smudges the ink. So I don't always enjoy working on just paper. I love working in the books, basically. Really enjoy working in books. But yeah, that was a page I did. Not, not at that happy with uh, my portrait work. So the chin for example is too exaggerated um maybe this crease here as well is too exaggerated but yeah that was that one and then this is a color along on the channel this is from the freebie that rita berman had very kindly given to all of us on instagram um she keeps her freebies up for a period of two weeks and you can go and download it and then she takes them off and so this was for the asia book when while well, she was trying to promote it and um yeah i did a full color along for all of these again a challenge for me because they're all small illustrations but really enjoyed doing them and again i'm not a huge fan of coloring on on um, paper <laughs> i like the books but yep full color along available on the channel for this um this page and then the only other PDF sort of colouring I've done is another freebie. I don't, I haven't bought any PDFs basically. I, all the ones that you see that I may have printed and coloured would be freebies that I've um, managed to download. Um, so this is from RJ Hampson. Um, and I think he was doing a giveaway challenge or something like that. And I tried doing this because I think um, this was requested. Yeah, this was requested by someone. They requested me to colour this page and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I love how I did, again, try to experiment with my sky there. Um, yeah, simple page. I don't have any of his books. I really do want to try one of them out. So hopefully soon I'll pick one of his books to try out. I know it's on Amazon paper, but I'll try it out because I'm quite enjoying. I've sort of figured out how I like colouring in Tatiana Bogema's nice little towns now so I think hopefully I'm ready to try out some a couple of other Amazon books that I really like the art for. All right back to the books and I'm going to go through Maria Trolle books now. So I coloured in again all of Maria Trolle's books except Twilight Garden and her new one which I got quite recently and I haven't I just haven't got around to it which is Moon Valley. Um, but yeah, so this is Maria Trolle's Nightfall, and I did this page here. Really enjoyed doing this page, actually. I think I used Neo Color Tools for the background, if I'm not mistaken. And I remember using a lot of Tombow pens for basing everything, and then the sprinkling effect with the water, metallic watercolor paints. There we go. Really like that. Love the colors. I love the fact that I tried to use different leaf colours green because I tend to use the same ones for leaves all the time similar but that's the only page I did in Nightfall I haven't done that many Maria Trolley pages actually this year which is quite sad because I do enjoy colouring in her books like I find them so relaxing um this is Maria Trolley's Flora and I did one page in here oh yeah I remember this page really enjoyed this page actually um I did use Distress Ink for the background, but yeah, I did find that um, 
when I use the water droplet water sprinkling effect it definitely goes through in uh, Maria Trolley's books which is sad like right there you can see it all because um, I know the paper is really really good but I didn't realize that because I, I, I do this splash effect in Hannah Carlson's books and it's never gone through so I assumed it wouldn't I should have tested it but it did go through but that's okay um, really like the colors I use I was just experimenting and playing around with the a distressing background and yeah the foreground is quite simple and that's the only page I did in Maria Trolle's Flora and then I have a Tannicum by Maria Trolle and I did a couple of pages here oh yeah this one was a before the channel um, there was a colour along on Instagram, a hashtag for using all greens, I think. And possibly green hair for normal colouring. So I combined two hashtags or something like that. And that's why this page is all green, including the watercolour, meta metallic watercolour in the background splash effect. Um, yeah, I don't think it's the best page, but I enjoyed trying to experiment with so many different greens to see what I could come up with. So that was fun. I uh, really like the greyish greens here. I don't know if I wrote those combinations down because I really like that actually. Um, so I need to try and look back to see if I wrote that down. And then the only other page I did was this one here. And I feel like I've done a How I Colour video uh, quite early um, on the channel, I think, if I'm not mistaken, for How I Colour Leaves, possibly. Yeah, I think I remember colouring this on a video. Um, so yeah, you can check that out. And I used new colours too for, for the background. And then a lot of you liked this colour combination I used. And that's why I used it in that Rita Berman double page spread in Europa. Um, to share um, the colour, the background, how I did the background on this page. Uh, yeah, really like how the leaves turned out. Not so, and, and the background and the girl, all of that. Not so happy with my plums, um, but that's okay. Yeah, and that was Maria Trolle's Botanicum. And then I have Maria Trolle's Luna. I think, did I do two pages? Yeah, good. So this page, which I really had fun with, again, try to think outside the box, not because I think I have a tendency in Maria Trolle's books to just keep try and keep things realistic when I say realistic my coloring is not exactly real doesn't give the most realistic effect but I try and use the colors that are more conventional like green leaves and I do use the key at the back of the book um to find the those particular whatever flowers are on a page what their colors would be and try and use that so I think I really enjoyed this page because I did not um I was not conventional and I love how it turned out and again I think the hair must have been inspired by a color along by normal coloring on Instagram because it's blue and purple I wouldn't have thought of that um, but because of her coloring challenge I know it's a very small person but um, I still used her challenge for that really enjoyed doing this page and I love the end result it's quite a challenge trying to do something quite using quite limited color palettes, actually. Um, and I remember being a bit stuck on what to do with these flowers. And then it just sort of comes to you and you just use the same colors that you have, but just make it look a little bit different. So I went very light with it. And yeah, I think it worked really well. And then I have this page, simple page. And I think, yes, this is a colour along on the channel. I used a lot of Tombow Jewel brush pens, I remember, for basing pretty much everything, including the background um, on this page. Really enjoyed this page. So, yeah, that was from Maria Trolles, Luna. Okay, then I have Clara Markova's books. This is her newest book, Little Secrets from My Fairy House. And... You've seen this page quite recently in my December completed pages, I think. And all I did was this little page here just to test out my materials on the page. Um, yeah, I love this book. 
hopefully I'll get a chance to colour in it soon. But really enjoyed that. So that is Little Secrets from My Fairy House by Clara Markova. And then I have Clara Markova's Magical Delights. I've only done one page in this one. And it was this page here and I completed my mindless colouring. As I've mentioned before, I do tend to keep these pages, uh, adjacent pages, um, for mindless colouring. So I'll keep the colour palette, uh, whatever colours I've used on this page, I'll use it there. But I won't do it at the same time. It's when I feel like colouring, I don't know what to colour, I don't want to take on a big project. I'll do a little bit of um, scribbling on, on these um, adjacent pages and eventually they'd be finished. Um, but yeah. I really enjoyed this page so I used my I have a how I color video on I think on this entire page actually there is a not a how I color video a color along for this page actually uh yeah now I remember so I did the full page on on the channel and I used my technique of tracing to add these additional flowers in the background because I can't draw freehand very well so I use my tracing method which I have a how I color video on on the channel and I use that to sort of add in some flowers to just give it a little bit more especially on this side because I think there are only these two flowers um in the il original illustration and all these flowers were there already so I felt it looked a little bit empty and I added those in and then for the background I just did a pencil background I think it'll be on the color along but I tried to add the effect, which I don't think worked very well, but I tried to add that blurry effect of possible other flowers and leaves in the background. I really enjoyed colouring this page, actually. Um, and I love the pops of blue. It just breaks everything up. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed that. All right, and that was Clara Markova's Magical Delights. Then I have Clara Markova's Fairy Celebrations. There are two in this. Oh yes, this one was quite early. This was before I had the channel. Really enjoy this page. Um, my mindless coloring again matches this page. <laughs> love how my, my this moon turned out because I had no idea what I was going to do with that. So I love that I kept it subtle with just the greys rather than going vibrant because everything else in the foreground is so vibrant. And yeah, the background I just did with my simple Albert Durer pencils. I think I traveled at that time. I had this book with me and I didn't, other than my pencils and soft pastels, I didn't carry anything else in terms for in terms of using for background. So I used my Albert Durer activated for the background. I think it worked really well. But the paper is really good, so it works really well. It turns out really vibrant. I love my glass moons as well. <laughs> yeah, enjoyed this page. And then the other page I did, oh yeah, was this last month. Um, full colour along up on the channel, definitely for this one. This was one of the Christmas pages I coloured. Um, yeah, really liked this page. I won't go into detail because there's a colour along for it. Still sort of spending time on this page. So every now and then I'll go and do a little bit, as you can see. Um, but yeah, love how this page turned out. Really enjoyed it. A bit more of a successful interior um, coloured page for me. <laughs> All right. And that's Fairy Celebrations by Clara Markova. And then I have Clara Markova's Fairy Miracles. And I've done one page here. Ooh, this one. I did a while ago and I still haven't finished my mindless colouring, but it's there for when I want it. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this page. I I think I was a bit concerned. I, I wasn't sure what colour to do this cute little dragon. I think it's a dragon. Um, and then when I did do it, I thought it was, he was too dark. But I think it works now um, because it needed to be some a different colour from what everything else surrounding him was. So, yeah, I like how it turned out in the end. Again, I tried to do a cloud background with pencil. Not very successful, I don't think. But I, I am, I'm going to continue trying to work on it and figuring it out. Um, yeah, I really liked doing this page. Yeah, that's Clara Markova's Fairy Miracles. Then, 
oh yeah, this was the Whopper of page. Um, Clara Markova's Fairy Touch of Magic. And this was... Oh yes, the graveyard scene for Halloween. And I've got how I colour videos on some of these. Um, sorry, there's a bit of paper there. Um, how I colour certain elements. Um, so for part of the autumn series, how I colour autumn series, Halloween. So I coloured, I showed how I coloured the bat, um, the raven, um, I think the, the coffin and the zombie, uh, tombstone, the ghost, making it look transparent. And I think that's it. But yeah, I do have how I color videos for those on the channel. Really like how this page turned out. I don't break the spine, so it's not lying completely flat. But yeah, there we go. Enjoyed it so much. Background is with my Albert Dura pencils activated with water. It does take a little bit of more time because you're laying down the pencil and then activating it and then possibly going over it again. So obviously if I knew how to use watercolour paint for backgrounds, that would be a lot more time efficient. <laughs> um, so maybe I'll learn that one day, but um, at least for figuring out, um, making backgrounds a bit more um, easy and quick to do. But as as of now, I like using my pencils. And that was Clara Markova's Fairy Touch of Magic. And that's it for Clara Markova. So Hannah Carl's on next. I have Tales from the Midnight Masquerade. And I only did one page in this book. I haven't done Hannah Carl's on for a long time, actually, I feel. Um, so yeah, I, I need to pick out some of her pages. But um, I did this page and I think I have got a colour along. Maybe a how I colour, I feel. I, I feel like I did do one. don't know if it's up on the channel or not. For, was it colour along on the whole page maybe? Um, so you can check it out. Maybe it's, it's possible that I have this on the channel. I don't know why I feel like I do. But um, it feels, it's such a long time ago. This was in March, so when I just first started the channel. So I don't know, actually. But it might be up on the channel. You can check it out. Uh, distressing for the background in this case. I, I was trying to make, I wanted to do like a spotlight effect. But I didn't know how to do that. Um, like, you know, in the circus and they're high up in the, you know, doing their... Um, little stunts and I wanted the spotlight to be on them but I, I didn't know how to do that so I just made it look like it was still going dark to light there um and that's it I've done of this year from this book so that's Tales from the Midnight Masquerade then I have Tales from the Forest Kingdom and I did this page here there is a colour along for this page no a how I colour of video on this page possibly for how I do the background with distress ink yeah how I do backgrounds with distress ink is on the channel and a how I color video on how I do glass or bottles on the channel as well so um that's there really like how this page turned out actually really had fun with this page and then oh yeah I did this page I love the colors I use for distress ink so for this page I'd, I'd um chosen this page for again the how i color autumn series for acorns so i showed how i colored the acorns on this particular page and i wasn't sure what to do with the background so i just went a bit crazy with the background and then i did the acorn video and then then i had to try and figure out what colors to use in the foreground to match the background um so that was a bit of a challenge but i enjoyed it um i really like the colors i've used for the background so so colorful um love the pops of orange um yeah so that was fun and see the, the distressing doesn't go through when you use the water on it but unfortunately on maria trollers they do go through and then i have this video uh this page and i used again my technique of using tracing uh to add elements so i try to add these flowers not so sure i like how it looks on this page but i was just trying to experiment and i i like 
it. It was fun trying it out, basically. A challenge, isn't it? Um, and I feel like I have some sort of video on this page. I must have done a full colour along actually on this page because I remember doing the background with Neo Colour 2s and I used Tombow Jewel brush pens to do the clothing. So yeah, there is a video up on the channel for this. I'm, I'm starting to forget now what I have on the channel, even though it's not even been a year yet. But I think there's a video up on the channel. All right. And that's it from Tales from the Forest Kingdom. And then I have Daydreams. And I think I coloured in all of Cla uh, Hannah Carl's own books, actually. Although I only did like, you know, one one page or something like that in the books. But at least I got round to all of them. Um, so I did this page here. And I really like how it turned out. But I do remember struggling with the background. What was I trying to do? I think I was trying to do... I was trying to figure out how to do brocade background. And I haven't looked it up. I haven't YouTubed it. And I was just trying to play around on my own. I think if I'm not mistaken and I got really frustrated um, with doing an old pencil background and then I just decided to use black um, acrylic paint and just blocked it all out and then I went in and did the foreground and I love how it turned out and then I went and did all this glitter effect um, gold with gold glitter gel pen and I absolutely love the end result and I'm so glad I didn't just give up. I don't have that traded me just to leave a page abandoned I think I think I keep going at it until I'm satisfied or even if I'm not satisfied and I'm just fed up of a page I will scribble on it if I have to but I'll finish it um so yeah I think I kept at it for this page and I think it turned out good um I'm happy that I did and I love the colors I've used I don't know how I to use these colors maybe I got some inspiration from a color palette or from an illustration on Pinterest or something some artwork or something like that you must have got some inspiration for this color palette because it goes so well together I can't imagine me have coming up with it <laughs> um, so yeah really enjoyed that page I think and I like the fact that I didn't give up um, on the page and then some summer nights I think there's only one page, sorry, Summer Nights, and I have this page, oh yeah, I forgot about this, this page, it, it was really nice going through all these pages actually, because I know I have my illustrations, I post them on Instagram, so I have it all on there, but I, it's different going through the book physically and looking at your page physically, um, so it was really nice for me to just go through what I've done, because it's, it's a nice way of motivating yourself. If you feel like you're in a colouring slump and you don't know what to colour or anything like that, look through your look through your books, the uncoloured pages as well as the coloured pages. Some of the coloured pages might inspire you to do another page. You could use the same palette. You might look at the page and be like, whoa, I, I remember really enjoying using those colours. Let me just use those colours again on a different page and it might get you going again. So yeah, I was really enjoying looking at all these earlier pages that I haven't looked at for a while. But yeah, I, I remember really having fun with this page, distressing for the background. And I remember wanting to do, I think if you guys will remember the Makiko Inotome page where I did the rain effect with the splashes and I wanted to do it on this page. But once I'd finished the page and I liked how it looked, I was too afraid to. I wasn't brave enough just to go for it. Um, so I just kept it like this. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that page. And I think it was a, I think it was a hashtag again on Instagram. It was this before, but yeah, uh, this was just before I started working. And I think, why do I feel like, oh no, this is not from this year because no wonder I wasn't remembering this very well. It's actually 2021. I think I reposted it on Instagram. So when I was picking out all my pages to show you guys, I was like, how do I, I don't, I haven't made a list, one list of all the pages I colored in the year. So I thought the best way to look at what I've colored was go on my Instagram account and check all my pages that I posted. And that's how I picked it. And I think I reposted this page when we heard about, Hannah Carlson I think to show support for Hannah Carlson so with this you know the the idea of friendship of 
protecting the mice and you know protecting them from any harm um so yeah i'd reposted this this is not from 2022 sorry guys i take that back that was 2021 so i've not colored in this book then this year that's really sad so i need to try and put this aside and somehow make sure i color in that book i apologize for that all right um this is magical dawn i've done a few pages in this book um, the hashtag by Barbara Color. Um, she does a hashtag on Magical Dawn and she's working through those pages, I think, or she just does hashtags for those pages. And she picks a page every month to color. And I think some of them are because of the pages she had picked for that particular hashtag. I feel like I've missed out quite a few of them, but I um, sometimes if I like the page or if I feel motivated that, yes, I feel like coloring that particular page, I'll do it or I used to do it. Um, now I get, I've got a bit busy, um, so I don't manage to get to them. But um, that's why I've done quite a few pages in this book. And then some of them have just been because I felt like it. But I think this is one of the ones that I actually started colouring on my own. And then I didn't finish it that particular month. So when was this? March. So I must have started it in Feb, I remember. And then suddenly in March, she posted this page that's for March um, for that particular hashtag. I just, what's the hashtag? It's Colorions Ensemble Magical Dawn, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And it was this page and I was like, oh, brilliant. I've already started the page, so I'll, I'll put it towards that hashtag. But I really enjoyed coloring this page. I remember taking this book away when I went away for three months from home. And I remember doing some backgrounds beforehand. And I'd done the background for this page with Neocolor 2s because I wasn't taking that when I traveled. Um, so I did a few backgrounds. Um, and so I, I started colouring this page because of that. And yeah, I really enjoyed this page. I like how it turned out. Um, maybe the hair is not the, the best, but I like the colours I've used and stuff like that. I don't think it was very popular on Instagram, but I liked it. On that same trip away, I did this page. That's when we had heard the news about Hannah Carlson's um, health. And I remember picking this page to do because this is the only Hannah Carlson book I had with me. And so I remember doing the background with the Albert Dura pencils activated with water. The color palette for this was inspired by Fane um, on Instagram. I think she'd shared a color palette or something and said, use the color palette if you guys would like to. And so I tried out that color palette because it's not something I would normally go for. And I really like how this turned out. And I put all my heart into this page. Um, so yeah, I remember doing this page, loved doing this page. And then I have this one again on the same trip. That's why I did quite a few on this. Um, so I started it in January, yeah, because I was away for a few months. Um, so yeah, an early page and I'd already done the background before I left home. So I had the background done. I'd used new color twos, I think. Oh, and I remember on this particular page, I tried to use uh, Windsor & Newton white ink to white out everything before colouring it. So all the flowers and the leaves, especially, I'm not so sure I did it for the buildings, um, just to see what effect that gives. Because I know some people do that and I didn't know how to work with that. And I've not done it again. I like how it looks. It gives a different effect to your colouring. More like a painting, I think, I guess. Um, so maybe I should try it again. But that, that, that's what I did for that one. Oh, yes, I enjoy this. I enjoy doing this page as well. This was a bit of experimenting. Um, I haven't done it again. I, I, was, uh, I was quite stressed when I was doing this page. Reason being, I decided to do the Distress Ink, but I decided to do it on a clear plastic sort of, um, you know, the clear plastic sheets you put papers in. So I put the Distress Ink on that, I spritzed it with water and then I put it onto this page. And I had blocked out the line art with um, drawing gum. And after I did that, I was like, oh no, I didn't even think that maybe the ink would go through, but it didn't. I'm so lucky. Um, but I wasn't thinking and I think I was in a colouring slump or something and I'm like I just want to do something creative I want to try something out and I don't do that very often although Hannah Carlson's books does push me a little bit to experiment a bit more and that's what happened there so I did that 
and then I found so if you see those lighter areas yeah it gave a watercolor effect obviously now I'm not very I, I don't have an art background so I didn't know what to expect um so I did that and I'm like oh it's too light um for me and so as usual like I always tell you I don't always go for the watercolor effect so I needed to then bold, make it a bit more bolder so then I went in with my distressings direct to the paper and then I started loving how it was turning out um so I liked that little bit of watercolor effect I liked the darkening of the edges with the distressing and then I decided to go in and do blobs of um, metallic watercolor paint to give this rustic look. So I used, I can't even remember, maybe like a copper from the Arteza set and gold or something. Um, and I thought that made it look even better. And then I did my coloring. I have a tutorial on how I color gold. So three types of gold. Um, so di three different combinations for gold that I used on, on this page. I've shared it on a How I Color video. And then I finished off the page with some white Poscas and some sprinkling of Windsor and Newton white ink. And I ended up loving this page. But while I was doing it, the thing that stressed me out was the fact that I was so frustrated with my coloring slump and I didn't know what to do. And I saw this page and I'm like, I'm just going to try this. I don't know what's going to happen. And I just, you know, put that wet plastic sheet over the top and then I'm like I haven't even thought about it seeping through the page and I don't like the idea of that I know you can fix it sometimes but I don't like the idea of it seeping through and ruining possibly ruining a page and um so it stressed me out but I love how it turned out in the end I'm gonna try to do some with some pencil do some shadowing to make it look like the keys are sort of um 3d popping out of the page, floating off the, pa off the page rather than being flat. Um, so yeah, I ended up really liking that page. Sorry, I went on a bit. <laughs> and then I have this page, again, a little bit of um, experimenting. So I really do like experimenting in Hannah Carlson's um, illustrations. Her artwork just, I guess, inspires me to try different things. Um, and so I colored this page like normal. And then I decided to, I think I might have used Neo Color 2s for the background in this case, and then my Faber Castell. But then I decided to use a lot of, um, I used a combination of paint pen and then possibly Windsor & Newton white ink to do the splashing effect. I feel like, do I have a color along for this page on the channel? I might do. You can check it out. I, think, I feel like maybe I have a color along for this channel, uh, for this page on the channel. But yeah, I did this um, effect. I wanted it to look like crashing waves because there were a lot of lines on her illustration mapping out sort of a dress or water. And I wanted it to look like crashing wild waves. And yeah, I'm happy with how it turned out in the end. Um, again, I liked that I tried to experiment, um, which was good. So yeah, that's... Oh no, there is one more. Sorry. Uh, this is the last page um, in this book. I liked this page as well. Quite a simple page. Um, but I use my Albert Dura pencils for the background. And I have done a video on how I colour with watercolour pencils for backgrounds in colouring books on the channel. So you can check that out. Um, so yeah, like I said, I find my pencils so versatile that I use them for backgrounds. I use them for the foregrounds. Um, I could basically, if I didn't want to add any embellishments, use just my pencils to finish a page. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed um, doing this page. Simple page, but love the colour palette. Love the blues with the reds. Yeah, and that's it. So that was Magical Dawn. And then I have Seasons. This is the first ever Hannah Carlson book I got. There is a colour along in this book that I want to try and do for you guys. Hopefully I get around to doing it for this month. And um, yeah, it's this page here. And I absolutely love how this turned out. Now, the backstory for this page, I, I said I'd be quick. Sorry, guys. But the backstory for this page was that I this is the first Hannah Carlson book I ever got. So I have some early work in this um in this book but 
I always used to look at this page. It was just these two bottles on the page and these little elements here. And I used to look at it and I'm like, that's such a simple page. I should be able to color that page. And I always really, really wanted to color this page, but I had no idea what to do with it. I could not, I would never get inspiration for what colors to use on this page, how to do the glass properly, all of that. Um, and so I'd keep avoiding it, keep avoiding it. And then finally this year I did it. And I'm so happy that I got around to doing it and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Such a simple page, yet I like the colours of the pink and purple and the, the greens just popping out. Um, yeah, I, re I just really enjoyed doing this page um, in the end. So I'm glad that I put it off and I didn't just go for it. I, I wouldn't always advise that. If you guys feel like colouring, colour the page. Don't, don't be afraid to colour a page. Um, but the thing was, yeah, I didn't know how to do glass and stuff, but more than that, Every time I looked at the page, I wasn't getting any inspiration of what colors to do. And that's more what was stopping me from coloring the page. And finally, one day this year, when I looked at this page and I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe I can do this. And it worked for me. Um, so, yeah, I just waited till that little, um, <laughs> little inspiration kicked in. And I'm so happy I did because I like how it has turned out, even though it's quite simple. I like how it has turned out. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's the only page I did this year in this book, which is sad, but hopefully I'll get one uh, in 2022, sorry, and hopefully I'll get one done um, for this month, next month, maybe. All right. Then, jewelry box. And I've only done one page in the year. This was, yeah, before the channel, I think and very different for me i used i think neo color twos for the background um i wouldn't usually go for a yellow background but i'm so glad i did i think it works really well on this page it looks so summery um even though it wasn't summer at that time but i really like how i colored it i like that i went for the yellow um a bit different i like that i used blue just for the crystals and then popping out um I do have a video on how I do crystals, actually, not on this particular page, on a separate page on the channel. Um, but I think I use similar color combinations for that particular tutorial. Um, used a lot of paint pen. And yeah, that's it. Really like this page. Um, I like that I was a bit um, adventurous with my color choice here. Really want to color in this book a bit more. But yeah, that's jewelry box. I really want to color in a lot of my books a bit more. And then I have Spirit Animals. You guys have been seeing this book every month for a whip that I've done. But I did complete a page in 2022. Um, and it was this double page spread here. I am doing them as double page spreads. Um, even if I don't finish it at the same time, I'll try and do one side of the page if I have to. And then come back and do the other side pretty soon after before I go on to choosing a different spread. So, for example, I did this one in 2021. I did it as a double page. And now this one here in 2022. And I guess the one I started in the, the whip, which is, where is it? You guys have seen it a million times now. I feel so bad for you guys. But this whip, <laughs> um, I started in 2022 and hopefully I'll finish it in 2023. That's really bad, isn't it? One, one double page spread a year. Um, anyways, I enjoyed this page. I, again, experimented. I would never go for a rainbow background. I used Neo Color 2s for the background and I'm glad I tried to experiment. And the hair color was inspired again by At Normal Coloring and that obviously, um, inspired my background as well. So some of these challenges are really nice. Um, I really like doing all these hashtags on Instagram, not just at the hair ones, but just generally. I think everyone who puts up hashtags is, is just wonderful because you give so much motivation and inspiration for my, my you know, the pages I choose sometimes, the, the pages I color, how I color them sometimes, the colors I choose, you know. Um, so it's quite nice doing those hashtags. Um, I just wish I could do more nowadays. I used to get through so many, but it's a bit hard nowadays. But yeah, really enjoyed this page. 
Oh yeah, and for the hair in this particular, in both of them, I, I whited them out with Winsor & Newton white ink, which I don't always do, but I tried it in this case and then went over with my pencils, which was quite nice. And I, I'm going to have to try some of these techniques. I haven't co coloured in Hannah Carlson for a while and I tend to do all the experimenting in her books, actually. Um, but yeah, there we go, Spirit Animals. And that was the last one by Hannah Carlson. And I'll be back with some more. Okay, so my next set of books, and these are going to be the final books, but there's a few more to go. Um, sorry, guys, I, I I did say I'd be really quick, but I do get a bit chatty. I apologize for that. What can I say? I, I, I enjoy talking to you guys. Um, all right, so I have a page in uh, Denise Klett's Mermaids in Paradise, and I did this one here, which, oh, I left my papers in here. Um, which is, I'll take these off, these are just the papers I put on the back of my pages when I'm colouring, so I forgot it in that one. Um, so this is this page here, and I have got a full colour along on this page, so I had put up a poll during Mermaid with a few choices of Mermaid pages to help me choose which one to colour, because I'm, I don't always gravitate to as colouring mermaids. And you guys chose this one, and I'm so grateful that you guys did, because I hadn't coloured in this book for ages. Um, I think I showed this recently, actually, um, so you guys may remember it. But uh, yeah, so I did this page. It is a full colour along. I used soft pastels for the background and a lot of Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing. Um, yeah, I like how it turned out. Um, I like how my soft pastels worked. I used a few colours, I think, to try and get the sort of sea effect or sea colour. <clears throat> Sorry. And that was Denise Klett's Mermaids in Paradise. And I've just realised all the books I'm going to show you now are kind of mismatched. Um, I should have probably put it in order of um, illustrators, but hopefully you guys won't mind. Um, so we have Melpomene's Chatsy Panagy 2's Circle of Life done a few pages in this book because I absolutely adore this book. I have this one here. Now in her books I do tend to use Tombow Jewel brush pens a lot for laying out colours because they, they are quite um, detailed pages. Um, yeah. And then I did <laughs> this one here. I always laugh at this page because of how bright the yellow is but I, I do like it when I look at it now. Um, yeah, I used my favourite Castell Arbic Jura pencils activated with water for the sky and the water. And then I did, oh yeah, this page here. This is a full colour along on the channel. Really enjoyed doing this page. Distressing for the background or for these, you know, the corners of the pages. Um... Yeah, really liked this. Really liked, again, that I didn't just go for conventional um, sky colours. I like how that turned out. Again, I used a lot of Tombow Jewel brush pens, like I said, for her illustrations. Whether it's in her Nature Mandala's book or Circle of Life, I tend to use a lot of them for basing. Since I started colouring in her this book of hers. And then I have this one here really enjoyed this again i think there's a color along for this page on the channel i'm forgetting now um but yeah i think there is and then i have this one here i loved how this turned out this one i did in my own time i think i was just feeling like um coloring for myself i think and i was inspired to color this page and i love how it turned out again experimenting with my skies I love how tropical it looks um all these turquoises with the yellows and pinks and used to uh, quite a bit of tule art paint pens on this particular page for highlighting and yeah I like how it turned out I love how my waterfalls turned out and that's it actually in this book all right that was circle of life by Mel Pomeni Chatsi Panagitu and then I have one in Frozen Fantasies, but I've sort of started a background in another one. Hopefully I get around to colouring it this month or next month. And it's this page here. 
really like how it turned out. It wasn't very popular on Instagram, but I think I don't like how I did so much purple for the sky background. Um, but other than that, I quite like it. I like how my shells turned out. I like that I did my octopi so dark blue um, to make it stand up from all the other blues. I, I like it and I like how the buildings look like ice buildings. Not so sure my ice cubes look very realistic. I don't know how to do ice cubes. It's the first time I had I had done it. Um, but yeah, I en remember enjoying doing that page. And then when I've started, just a quick sneak peek is that one. Okay. And that's Mythographic Frozen Fantasies. Like I said, this is all very random. I should have put it in order of illustrators. I don't know why I didn't. Um, I was just picking them up. I was looking, I was scrolling through my Instagram and I was just picking them up randomly, like just trying to find the books. So this is Romantic Country, the third tale. Oh yeah, and I'd done this page. So I'd actually started this page in 2021 in, in, in autumn, but I'd traveled, like I said, and I didn't have the book on me. And then I ended up finishing it in 2022, March of 2022. And I really remember enjoying this page and I was so upset that I didn't have it with me when I was traveling because I was coloring it just before we traveled. And I remember really enjoy doing this page. I was using my Tombows. For example, I've, t I've mentioned that in these uh, Japanese edition books that the Tombow dual brush pens, you can put it down direct to the paper and use the water to the water brush to um, blend the color out. So I was experimenting with that on this particular page. I did the whole uh, building with that and I was really just having fun I was trying to add the tree backgrounds like the blurry effects and I was trying to do the um, reflections of the trees on the window and I just re really remember enjoying doing this page and I didn't have it with me when we traveled and I was like oh, I just wish I could have had it with me and continued coloring it but at least I finished it um, even though I finished it coming into spring but that's fine um, yeah I like how my lamppost turned out. All right, and that was from Romantic Country, The Third Tale. I picked out a few winter pages or Christmas pages in this book to do, but I never got around to it. For this December 2022, I didn't get around to it. And then Nature Mandalas, I've done quite a few in this, but I think, didn't this book come out in 2022, I think? So all the pages I did in them was this last year. So I've done this page. I feel... Like I may have a colour along on this page on the channel. Yeah, I think I do. I may, may have done half of it and done the other half on the channel. You can check it out. Really enjoyed it. Again, in like I said, in Mel Pimeni's books, um, so this is Nature Mandalas, I, along with Circle of Life, I use Tombow Jaw brush pens a lot for just laying out where my colours are going before I go in with pencils. It really helps. I did this one. This one was a body colour with Amanda from Amanda Colours. Really enjoyed doing that body colour. I remember her page turned out really pretty too. I used, um, again, Tombow Jewel brush pens for the background, but then I went over with pencils a little bit to, dark, uh, to make it a bit darker. And I used, I liked using the, if you can see, uh, the, the sun's rays. I used, uh, there were lots of black lines and I just went over them with the gold metallic paint and I like how that effect turned out. This was the first page I did in this book when I got it um, because it reminded me so much of Kenya. Um, as you guys know, those of you who have watched my channel, I'm originally from Kenya. I was born there. And so this page, because of the rhinos, um, just really reminded me of Kenya. And so I said, OK, this has to be the first page I do. Um, and so, yeah, I did this page again. Lots of basing with Tombow Jewel brush pens. Again, I think I have not. I think I do have a uh, sort of a colour along on this page or it's a how I colour video on detailed pages um, so how I use my Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing everything mapping out my colours and then going in with my pencils so um, yeah there is a video on how I tackle detailed pages like this so you can check that out I really liked how this page turned out and then yes I've done this page I think there was a colour along on Instagram for um what was it for horses I think I think it was horses or it was apples or um 
harvest or something like that. I think wheat and apples. Yeah, might have been harvest or something like that um, in August. And I did that. Really liked it. Okay, and I think that's it in this book. So that was Nature Mandalas by Malpomeni Chatsi Panagitu. Then I have Kirby Roseanne's Fragile World. And I had done this page and I absolutely enjoyed doing this page. And I hadn't coloured in this book for so, so long. So I was so glad that I got round to doing it. Um, and I feel like I have a video on this book, on this page. Yeah, I have a video for how I colour, again, a how I colour video with soft pastels for basing. Um, so I based the bumblebee with soft pastels and I showed how you can use soft pastels to do a lot of the um, basing, including shadows, not just using the one colour um, to base the whole bumblebee, but to using darker shades of colours and just sort of actually giving that shadowed effect before you go in with your pencils and just darkening everything up. So I did show that on the channel. So I have a how I colour video on that. And I think the rest of it I did off camera in my own time. And I just loved it. I think I used Neo Colour 2s possibly for the background. I like that I went crazy with the colours again. It's very rare that that happens to me. But when I get the inspiration to use something a bit different, I do it. Um, and usually it turns out quite nice. I don't know why I'm not a bit more adventurous with my background colours. But yeah, I love how that page turned out. Yeah. And that was Kirby Roseanne's Fragile World. I haven't done that many Kirby pages this year, this year guys. That was one. And I think there's another one somewhere. Um, and that's it. Okay, that's this is Tomislav Tomic's Drum and Manga. This you've probably seen quite recently in one of my videos. And I did this page here really enjoy this this was a buddy color again with bubble of coloring on instagram and on youtube um and we worked on this page over two months so we didn't give ourselves a deadline which was nice because it's such a busy page and i did not want it to feel stressful or feel like it i have to get it done and so i just enjoyed the process and we both did and um we took our time and we still finished around the same time um but it was so much fun doing this page. I really love colouring in this book. I find it a bit intimidating, but when I get inspiration for a page, I try and grab that chance of colouring that page. So when I flip through this book and I say, oh, I really feel it like colouring that and I have an idea for something on the page, I'll try and jump at the chance of colouring the page. And I usually just enjoy the process of colouring. Thomas Love Tomic's illustration. So yeah, that one. And one other one, which is... A huge favourite in this book at the moment is this one here. I just love how this dragon turned out. I love the background being so pastel toned. Again, it's not that often. Often I use pastel colours, so that was nice. But then yet my foreground is my style of bold, bright colours and it worked together. That was really nice. Um, I love how my leaves look, how my cherries look. I did the wings like sort of see through with lots of Posca pen. Um, I drew in, I think, I feel like I drew in that back um, to make it look see through the, the the wings. I drew the back of the dragon, that little section there. Um, yeah, really had fun with this page. And that was Tomislav Tomic's Dragon Langa. Then I have Nelko Neko's. Story of Precious Cats, and this one you guys have seen quite recently. I've done this page here. I love all the pages I've done in this book. I still need to work on fur because every time I look at I, I like how my fur is turning out, but it's still not very realistic. I think, yeah, I'm not an artist, so I don't expect to have wonderful results, but I have to keep working on it until I get it. But skin and fur is, yeah, definitely quite challenging for me. But I love how this page turned out. I love that I went for those colour roses to break up all the bright colours. Gives it a nice balance. I did this page during summer. I, there's a full colour along. Sorry, there is a colour along for this on how I colour clothing with Tombow Dual brush pens and pencil. And then I did this as a full colour along for this page during summer. And 
I love how it turned out. Again, I was trying to experiment with my clouds in the sky. I think it was a bit more su successful on this particular page. I don't remember the order. I feel like I may have done this before some of the other ones I've done, which were not as successful. But yeah, I like how it turned out on this page. Um, I used a lot of Tombow Jewel brush pens again. I did try to do sort of copper, I think, for the water pump bath. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this page. Can check that out on the channel and then this page i really enjoyed doing this page soft pastel background and then i darkened it up with pencil around the edges because i felt it was too subtle i have got how i color videos for the autumn series on this page for the pumpkins the corn the grapes some leaves yeah so not the full page just those few elements but i really like how this page turned out And, oh, and that's it. All right, that was Nelka Neko's Story of Precious Cats. Then I have Romantic Country, the first one. And I did <laughs> this page here. So my colour along recently, on um, this month actually, uh, was in this book. And I think I mentioned... That I'm not very good with exteriors as well. So I'm not good with interiors or exterior walls, basically. Um, I don't know why I went for such a bright pink, but I did. I think it works sort of because it's a patisserie, but um, I need to work on my exteriors and interiors, especially the walls. Um, yeah, but I enjoyed doing this page. It was fun. I need to look up that brick wall colour. Um, I can't remember. I hope I wrote it down just to give me different ideas. And then I did this one. This one I remember coloring for a hashtag for Instagram for coloring with Ukraine. And I think it was um, to do with child, uh, the children and losing their childhood and stuff like that. And so I colored that with uh, that. Uh, I colored this page with that in mind. Um, you know, children, bedtime stories and stuff like that. Really enjoyed this page. I did distress ink for these corners and I'd use the drawing gum to block out the flowers and leaves. Yeah, and that's it. That's Romantic Country, the first one by Iwi. Then I have Kanoko Egusa's Rhapsody in the Forest. Sorry, I know these are very randomly um, put together, but this is... Um, this is the winter page we just did. I have a full colour along for this page on the channel for December 2022. And I really enjoyed colouring it. Um, it was a challenge for me to figure out the patterns because I don't do patterns very much. But I love how it turned out in the end. And it was my first page in this book. So at least I broke into this book. <laughs> yeah. I used a lot of Tombow Jewel brush pens on that page as well. Uh, Rhapsody in the Forest by Kanoko Egusa. And then I have Iwi's The Second Tale. This is the English edition, the paper I struggle with. <laughs> but I did this page for Halloween and I absolutely love how it turned out. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to try and colour in this book again with no issues. Um, because I've always struggled with this, this paper, with my pencils at least. Um, I know people say that Prismacolor works really well. Um, I don't have them. don't know if I'll ever get them. But... Um, yeah it worked my pencils worked in this this time round when I colored and I think I ha hope I have figured out how to use my pencils now on this paper so I'll have to try it again but I really enjoyed it and I remember this page I took my sweet time I was just really enjoying the process of coloring this page and I was trying to do the light effects and I was just taking my sweet time light effects everywhere I used to art paint pens to help with that um yeah, I just really enjoyed this page. Yeah, that was Iwi's Romantic Country, the second tale. Then I have, not long now, just three more pages after this one. Uh, Kanoko Egusa's Minuet de Bonheur. I did this earlier in the year before I had the channel and I absolutely love how it turned out. It was really, it, it's always a bit scary colouring in her books because the artwork is so stunning 
and I want to do it justice and I want to color it well and I want to try and learn how you know new techniques and stuff like that um I think this page this interior was a little bit more successful still went for like peach walls but I think it works in this case um but yeah and I think I got inspiration for how to do the window definitely got inspiration from coloring with Alina I remember that yeah enjoyed I remember enjoying coloring this page again I used quite a bit of Tombow Joe brush pens for basing elements on this page even the wallpaper and stuff I mean the wallpaper I did with new color twos the leaf pattern on the wallpaper so that was Minuet de Bonneau by Konoko Agusa. And then I have Fabiana Atanasio's Mythographic Paradise. And yeah, I did this page. Seems like such a long time ago. I think this is the first time I was trying to do the cloud effect. Um, and I think it worked really well here. And I feel like I've gone downhill from there. <laughs> but... I like how it worked on this page, which is why I keep trying it over and over again in other pages and I'm not getting the same effect as I feel I got on this page. But yeah, I write it out in, in the earlier mythographic books. I do try and tend to white out um, the hidden objects unless it's really hard to figure out what the art, like the line art would be. So I try and white it out and I draw in the line art with a pen. Um, so like here those squares I drew in with a pen um, after whiting out the hidden object there. Although over there it's not very hidden because obviously I kept decided to put a cloud right there so I couldn't cover it up with <laughs> other shades of pencils. Um, but yeah, I liked this page. It, it took me a while to do it. I had to take, I had to keep taking breaks, especially when I came to do the leaves and flowers. So I do a little bit, I put it away, come back, do a little bit. So it became a bit of a mindless coloring page while I was doing the flowers and leaves, which was nice. I like sometimes having those pages where I start it and when it's a repetitive element like that, I'll keep it on the side if I don't feel like doing it and I'll be working on a different page. And when I want a break or when I don't have enough inspiration for a different page and I want something very easy, I'll come to a page like this where I know I have some repetitive elements to continue um, coloring and I'll do that. So it does help having a few pages on the go. So yeah, that was um, Fabiana Atanasio's Paradise, uh, Mythographic Paradise. Two more. I have Kirby Roseanne's Worlds Within Worlds. I hadn't coloured in this for a long time. I have to be in the mood to colour um, a Kirby. I love his work. As you guys know, my colouring journeys always started with Kirby. But I think um, as my colouring has developed, I want to now make sure that I, and I do come and do a page of his, I have good inspiration for that page. And I've seen so many completed pages. I don't want to copy anyone's. I want my own uh, ideas. So I'll try not to look at pages or I'll try and flip through my books. And when I get an inspiration again, just like Tommy Slap Tomic's books, when I get inspiration for a page, I want to go, I want to dive into it. And that's what happens with um, Kirby's books now. So I'll flip through them all the time. And when something just grabs me, I'll go for it. And that's what happened with this page. I really, really enjoyed colouring this page. Just use my Arbok Dura as the background uh, activated with water. Love how, I love how everything turned out on this page, actually, the colours I used. Really enjoyed it. And I just used a black micron pen. I think it's this one here. The graphic um, Sakura micron pen number one. Um, to do all the the birds yeah really enjoyed that page actually and that was worlds within worlds by kirby so whenever i do come to his pages i know i only did two in 2022 but when i do color his pages i really enjoy them now um i do take my time this is the last one no reason why i've left it to last um like i said i just picked everything randomly i should have probably thought it through but anyways Joseph Kattenbang's Mythographic Aquatic and the page I did and it's the only page I've coloured in this uh, Mythographic and I absolutely love this book of his for some reason it just really really inspires me whenever I look at any of his pages in this book and I did this one here and I absolutely love it um I used some module brush pens for basing a lot of the elements even doing in so I did like a few shades of Tombow's just putting in the shading and then just a little bit of pencil over the top um I love how 
colorful and vibrant it is and then the, the fact that i've kept the girl's nightshirt such a dark blue but everything else around her is so bright um i just really like how this page turned out um i used the metallic watercolor paints to do the wings not something i do very often i'm not very adventurous with my different mediums um trying to use them on a page i'm usually just my markers as bases or whatever but pencils ultimately um but yeah really really enjoyed doing this page as well um and that was joseph Kattenbang's aquatic and with that i finished this video finally and if you guys have made it through um this video thank you for still being here i'm sorry i chatted a lot um but like i said i enjoy chatting to you guys um so it just happens i try and keep in mind that i'm going to be quick but um i can't help myself uh but hopefully hopefully you guys enjoyed it i hope it was not too repetitive in terms of the pages you've already seen um some of them for me when i was looking through them i forgot that i'd colored them so that was really nice for me going through them at least um and i just really liked the fact that i've gone through so many page so many books i know that some of them i've just done one page in or um you know some illustrators i've only done one or two pages in but the fact that i managed to color such a variety i've really enjoyed looking through my pages so thank you for voting in the poll and for making sure i did this video um i really enjoyed doing it sorry it's so long but um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh yeah, and if you guys have a favourite, let me know what you think. There's so many pages to choose from, so you can let me know what illustrator maybe you like my colouring in, what um, maybe a specific page, maybe a specific series of books. What is your favourite when you see my colouring? What do you like? All right, I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.